Hello everybody, Puzzle Pieces here with more of Paints Creek Killings. We were just working on this lock here. We had done the math of the yellow and red darts from the game. And I was slightly off when I, <clears throat> excuse me, I was slightly off when I did the math, but I did correct it. So it's zero, one, oops, three, seven. Yeah. Oh, oh get out of crouch. Okay, and a key, and it's like a desk key, okay. Read. Oh yes, Bernard, right. All right, when the police reported that Vivian was murdered, I was floored. I still don't know what to do. My mind is blank. All I can think is, how did it happen? How can Vivian be dead? Everyone is mourning about Vivian's death. People are coming or calling in to express their condolences. Charles hasn't been out of his room for days, and Trish is crying her heart out. Oh, poor thing. Dorothy has been assigning uh, busy work to all the mansion employees, hoping that it would take their minds off of Vivian's death. Samuel, our security guard, has been reviewing all the tapes of the past two weeks for any suspicious activities. I wish I could be of any help. Scott has just been apprehended for the murder of Vivian. Is that true? No one would have thought of that. I would- I could never, ever believe that. Scott would be capable of killing someone, yet alone Vivian. Yet it makes me so mad. I feel confused. Trisha was admitted to the hospital. Okay, this is why we get to the hospital bit. She had a nervous breakdown after finding out that Scott could be her- mother's killer. Her condition has been getting worse over the past few weeks and no one has been able to properly help her. Charles finally decided to seek help from the hospital. Matthew never believed that his son killed Vivian. He hired some fancy lawyer to defend him. Scott's been released on bail today. It's beyond ridiculous. I don't think Scott should have been released at all. Despite the insufficient evidence, he killed Vivian. I know that he's guilty. Everyone knows it. Okay, dude, you don't know that. Um, <laughs> uh, they should have gone ahead and uh, prosecuted him. The maids were cleaning the mansion when they found some stuff belonging to Vivian, a key and some stationery. I asked Charles what he'd like to do with them, but he told me to take care of it himself. Wait, of it myself. I brought them back to my place. Okay. Vivian's death has caused lots of grief to everyone, especially Charles. After hearing how heartbroken Charles was two nights ago, I can't bear to see him suffer anymore. Scott should pay for what he did. Okay, so... Okay. Alright. And we checked through these, right? Yes, I believe we did. Alright, so... He brought Vivian's things. And we have a- there's a dart on the floor. Oh, That's where the picture came from. It was behind the door. Oh, okay. I was just going by the picture. It's locked. Oh, well let's see if our new key here... It doesn't work. Okay. Uh, oh yeah, let's use this one. Ah, there we go. Okay, let's see what's inside. There is a book there, but let's check here first. Uh, empty books. Sheets. And more sheets. Those. Pick up. More reading. Day one. The hospital gave me these pills. They are supposed to help fight depression. Day two. I feel slight. Uh, I feel slight dizziness. It might be the food that I ate this morning. Oh yes, they were saying that his um, that he was very he wasn't feeling well that day. Day three. The dizziness comes and goes. I'm still able to work. Not a big problem. Day five. It's my day off today. I didn't take the medication. By the evening, I started thinking about Vivian. Ooh, okay. 
Day eight, I had to drive Vivian again, so I took double the dosage. I had a migraine for the rest of the day. At least I didn't have to think about her. Okay, so the depression is coming from her. Couldn't Vivian stop seeing that guy? Why can't I stop thinking about it? Day 12. Now I know that my dizziness comes from those pills. Of course, yeah. They ha there is side effects. Uh, day 20. The pills. They don't seem to work anymore. It doesn't matter if I take them or not. I can't stop imagining what Vivian and that guy are doing whenever they meet. I stopped taking the medication. Ooh, okay. That's a uh, interesting thing. And of course, he's the one with all the freaking weapons in the house. Nothing. Oh, what's that? Oh. Oh. Okay, then. Yeah, let's read on. January 12th, 1995. I drove Vivian today since Derek is out of town with Charles. As I was driving, we talked. She expressed that despite having a success successful business, she felt empty and tired. Trisha hates Vivian, so trying to stop her from seeing Scott... Oh, for trying to stop her from seeing Scott. She seems to be really bothered by the name Vincent, and her relationship with Charles seems to just be for show. I wish I could comfort her. She's going through so much right now. If only I could confess to Vivian how much I respect... How much I respect I have for her. How much I admire her. Yee. Ever since Trisha brought up the name Vincent, Vivian has been pretty quiet. Even during dinner, she hardly spoke. I can barely remember the last time Vi Vivian appeared happy. I don't think anyone can blame her. Wanda wasn't, hasn't been coming in to work for a while now. Her illness is getting worse. I wonder how she's coping. Derek wasn't able to drive Vivian again, so I offered to help. It's been a month since I first drive, since I first drove for her. She's been opening up more to me. Uh, telling me about the struggles she's facing with, her rocky relationship with Charles, and how she really dislikes Scott. Sometimes I would give her some suggestions when she asked what she should do. Other times she just wants someone to listen. Uh, mostly I'm just happy to be with her. Okay, 22nd. Vivian seems rather distraught recently. During the afternoon tea gathering, I stood outside the room and tried to listen to the conversations. She feels miserable being with Charles, they hardly look at each other, let alone speak. Personally, I don't think Charles deserves her. Okay. I finished reading Vivian's biography. Half the facts were incorrect. The writer should have done his homework better. All right. March 17th. Sometimes when I'm driving for Vivian, she asks me to drop her off at the corner of a street, typically in front of Tom's Cafe. Okay. She's always telling me that she'll make it back home on her own. It arouses my curiosity, so after dropping her off today, I parked the car and watched her. She ordered a cup of coffee to go. She then left the cafe and walked up the street for about five minutes to a residential area. She stopped in front of an apartment and pressed the doorbell. Shortly after, a man in his early 30s, wearing a suit, opened the door. He leaned over and hugged Vivian. Oh, this is what he was jealous about. She gave the coffee to him, and they exchanged some words. I couldn't hear what they said. They then entered the apartment together. Who is he? This is the sixth time I followed Vivian. After she went into the building with the guy, I parked the car nearby to wait for her to come out. Uh, is this considered stalking? Yes, it is. Um, about two hours later, a cab stopped out in front of the apartment. Shortly afterwards, Vivian came outside, and the man followed closely behind. They chatted for a bit. Vivian looked extremely comfortable with him. Before leaving, she kissed him on the cheek. What's going on? Ah, she's having an affair too. May 29th. I tracked down the guy. He works at a bank. The place they met is his apartment. How could she do that? Who the hell is he? I reported sick for the third consecutive day. As I laid in bed, I kept thinking on why Vivian would be seeing another man. No matter what Charles did to her, she has kept her faith in him throughout the years. How could she be having an affair now? She's better than that. She's supposed to choose me. Oh, ho, ho, ho. okay, possessiveness. Oh, now we have his story. Okay, so I'm leaning more towards uh, Bernard here being the, the killer. Basically being the whole, like, you should have chose me. Or, you know, something like that. 
He has a stand-up shower too. Uh, nope. Close. Yeah, he was becoming obsessed with her. Interesting that they that he had pills for that. Okay. Check if there's anything behind the door. <laughs> Open. Okay, so inventory. Diary. Oh yes, and I'm thinking that this might be actually hospital room key, not... But we'll see. Because at first I thought it was for the inn, but... Uh... What's there? A place where he had... something locked? Oh, it's locked. Oh! Okay, hold on. Uh, da 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 da. Ooh. No. Crouch. No, I'm looking at this. Okay, I don't think that's it. Hmm. Yeah, I thought there was somewhere that... Well, he said that he brought the stuff with him, but... A uh, journal. Or a diary. Okay, well, okay. Okay, so we finished uh, Bernard's story there, seeing that he was very much obsessed with Vivian, so much so that he could have killed her. Oh yes, we're going to the hospital. No, it was either hospital or something in here. We'll have to check. Hmm. Hmm. Is something upstairs? Oh, that's just the bathroom. Close that. Close. Tch. Yeah, we got that. Okay, hold on. No. Okay, let's try the other one. Okay, so we don't have that key yet. Okay, back downstairs. Oop, ran to the wall. <laughs> to the hospital. 
Yeah, because of course I was sitting there thinking like, oh, well, there's 203 at the inn, but then there's also room 203 at the hospital, so that's why we're going back to the hospital. I apologize for background sounds. It's rather warm today, so keeping the uh, keeping the windows open. And of course, I live downtownish. Uh, take the elevator now that it's working. Boop. What do you mean they aren't working? I fixed the I fixed the thing. Okay, fine. Stairs never hurt anyone. I was just hoping we could ride the elevator. Room 201. Oh, wait. Hmm. Well, we don't have a 201 key. 202. Two oh three. There we go. We are in. That's close. Okay. Nope, nothing in there. Hmm. Whole lot of nothing. Eat more Cheerios. Oh, thank God, a key. Looks like a room key. Oh, no, pick it up. Diary. All right. Yesterday, on hearing that Scott was apprehended for the murder of her mother, Trisha collapsed. The hospital called this morning to inform us that it was just a nervous breakdown. However, they've suggested that she should stay here for another few days. Charles is asking me to stay by her side. It rained today. Trisha has always hated the rain. She stayed in bed, tucked under the blanket, uh, nearly the entire day. Here and there, she muttered Scott's name out loud. She, she's cried herself to sleep a few times. It pains me to see her like this. Charles visits Trisha almost every day. Today he was quieter than usual. All of a sudden he told me that Vivian had been seen, has been seeing another man, apparently a banker, for more than a year. He asked me if Vivian ever talked to me about it. I said I didn't know anything, but was sure that Vivian would never have done such a thing. Well, she did. And I realized that Trisha was awake. I'm not sure if she heard her, our conversation. Sheriff Howard came today. He asked me if I remember seeing anything suspicious the night Vivian died. I already told him everything I know. It's frustrating to be asked over and over about these things that I just want to forget. Before he left, I asked if Scott could really be the killer. He said he's wondering the same thing. If Scott is not the killer, then who killed Vivian? Derek came by to see Trisha. I asked him how he was doing. He said that the medical expenses for Wanda are more than what he expected. Even with Charles's help, he's been forced to use up most of his savings. He's currently searching for a second job. Oh, the poor guy. He asked me if there was a future for him. Traveling with Charles made him see some of the rather ugly sides of the world. His mother is hospitalized with terminal cancer. Oh, sorry, terminal, sorry. <laughs> terminal cancer. And seeing his best friend Trisha like this pains him. I don't know what to tell him. Before he left, he leaned close to her and whispered, would it... Would it have been better if Scott just never showed up? Would you have chosen me? I wish I'd never heard that. Aw. Okay, here we go. Scott Brooks by found by Jogger with multiple stab wounds. Okay, so we have stab wounds. We have uh, um, bashing of the head. Okay, please do not know if this is tied. It is tied, definitely tied. Uh, SAR suspect found yesterday. 
Long Maple Maple Drive. Jogger happened. Motionless body. Covered in blood. Shortly around seven, victim declared dead. Okay. Okay, so his body was found on the roadside along Maple Drive. Okay. Okay, so someone did get to him. Okay. That's horrible. Wait, who is in... Uh, let's go to our map for a minute. Yeah, okay, no. I was just trying to think. Uh, photos. Where's our little book? Oh, I don't know if we figured that one out yet. Oh, here we go. That's what I was looking for. Okay, so she was in 203. Okay. Okay, and Wanda was in that bed, right. Okay, so yep. And delete that one. Yes. Okay. Okay, so we have a key and we have two keys. Oh yes, found to next to Dorothy's diary. So that is why we need to go back to her house. Okay. To see if we can open the door. Because Trisha did stay with her for a little bit. Or not Trisha, sorry. Um oh, not Trisha. Uh Sophia. Sophia stayed with Dorothy. Uh nope. Uh this way. So Scott has the stab wounds, so probably from a knife. Vivian got something of an axe wound to her head. Poor Sophia was pushed down a well. <laughs> oh no, 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 she fell and hit her head, that's right, and broke her neck, that's right. Then they put her into the well. Yeah, they weren't kidding when they said, uh, Payne's Creek Killings. <laughs> Plural. <laughs> okay. Yay. Ooh. A big key. Pennant of Mary. Okay. Mm, another diary. Scott was released from prison this morning. Matthew went to pick him up. There is a lot of tension here in Paints Creek. Most people think Scott is a murderer. Charles tried to stop Trisha from seeing Scott, but it's no use. She was already waiting for him at the cabin. Okay. Charles is drinking again. He couldn't stop Trisha from see trying to see Scott, yet Scott seems to be avoiding her. Trisha should not have been discharged from the hospital at this point. She still needs help and rehabilitation. Derek and Scott fought at the market today. Oh yes, Derek was um, in this love triangle too. Uh, okay, yeah. Scott didn't say anything, he just walked away. Derek told him not to come back anymore. It's sad to see what's happening to them now. They used to be such good friends. Not really. <laughs> My god, Scott was killed. Trish has been going crazy ever since Scott died. She sometimes screams in the middle of the night. Here and there she'll ask us why Scott hasn't visited her for a while. No one seems to know how to answer without agitating her condition. 
Trisha is finally being admitted to the hospital for another mental breakdown. Charles doesn't know what to do. I've asked for his permission to take care of Trisha. Yep, yep, no, I hear you. Uh, while she recovers, I think Charles appreciates my help. All right. Oh, Dorothy's story is now done. Okay, daughter of ex-mayor found dead at the hospital. Oh, she jumped off the roof. Okay. Okay. Ground. Ground's dead. She heard someone near the reception area. She went out to find Trisha laying motionless. All right. Okay, so now we know. All newspaper articles found. Yeah! Go us! Okay, so... It wouldn't surprise me if uh, Scott... Or not Scott, sorry. If Charles, in this whole event, basically um, unended his life as well. After all this. Dear Dorothy, I want to express my heartfelt gratitude for all you've done for me. I've taken care of my store. Oh, you've been you've taken care of my store so on so many occasions. You've helped maintain it. It's bright. I don't I can't read that word. Uh, I would be lying if I said that I'm not saddened by your departure. I will gladly miss you. I wish you all the best in your new place. Uh, do invite me once you're settled in. Oliver Gibson. Oh yes, we need to go to the store there to get, uh... Oh, okay, maybe... Oh! There we go, she has the key to Oliver's, uh, store. Because she go she went there to clean. Everything is working out. Oh yeah, the, the alarm went off. So, in the next, uh... Okay, we need four digits for that. So in the next video, we're gonna try and open up this, uh... This box that says Sophia on it. So do stay tuned. This is Puzzle Pieces signing off.